In this lesson, we are going to discuss power sets. What are power sets? Suppose that we have a set S. The power set of S is just a set whose elements are the subsets of S. Symbolically, it means that it contains all A such that A is a subset of S. For example, for each set S below, let us determine its power set. Moreover, let us find its cardinality and the cardinality of the power set. Suppose that we have the empty set as our set. What will be the subset of the null set? Let us recall this property that for any set, the null set is always one of its subsets. So therefore, the power set of S, the empty set, is just the set containing the empty set. Because remember that the only subset of S will just be itself. So in this case, the cardinality of the power set of the empty set is just equal to 1. Next, suppose that we have S is equal to the set containing the elements A and B. Let us write the subsets of S systematically. So first, we have the null set. This is the set containing no elements. And then let us write down the subsets containing one element. Those will just be the set containing A and set containing B. And lastly, of course, the set S, the set containing two elements. So that will be the entire set S itself. And therefore, our power set will just be the set containing all of these sets. And therefore, in this case, the power set of S, its cardinality is equal to 4. Next, what about if we have the set containing 1, 2, and 3? So just like what we did with number 2, we will list down all the subsets of S systematically. Of course, we have the null set. Next, we have the one element subsets. So those would be 1, 2, and 3. Next would be the two element subsets. So we have 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1, 3. And of course, the set containing three elements, the entire set itself. This will now be the elements of your power set. So therefore, the cardinality of the power set of S is equal to 8. Here's another example. We have the set S. It contains the sets containing 1, 2, 3, the set containing 4, 5, and 6. Determine whether the following are true or false. Number 1. Is 6 an element of S? Yes, this is true because we have 6 here. Next, is the set 4, 5 an element of S? Yes, this is that element. This is true. Is 4 an element of S? No, this is false. We have the set containing 4, 5, but not the number 4 inside of S. Next, is the set containing 6 an element of the power set of S? Remember that A is an element of the power set of S. Is the same as saying that a is a subset of S. So therefore, this is just asking whether the set 6 is a subset of S. Yes, this is a subset of S since 6 is an element of S. This one here is true. Next, we have... The set containing 6, is it a subset of the power set of S? Take note that if we have X being an element of a set, let's call it A, if we want this to be a subset, we have to turn this element X to be a set. So this will be a subset of A. So therefore, this one here is false. Why is that? It should be the set containing this element. You have 6. This is a subset of 
the power set of S. This is an element of the power set, so therefore you still have to turn that into a set. 4, 5 is in S, that is just the same as that one, this is true. Next, the set containing the set 4, 5, is that an element of S? So now we have a lot of braces here, so it starts to be confusing now. If we just look at this one, if you want to remove power set here, so this is saying 4, 5, the set. Take note, this one contains only one element. This is an element of the power set of S. It's just the same as saying that this set is a subset of S. Is this a subset of S? Yes, because the set containing 4, 5 is just an element of S. If you got confused with that, you can just let this set be equal to x. From here, we can see now that x is an element of S and therefore the set containing x is a subset of S. Remember, why do we enclose it by braces? Because this is an element. Subsets have to be sets in the first place. So that's why we need braces here. And therefore, look at that. Your x is the set containing 4, 5. This is also true. Next, is the null set a subset of the power set of S? Yes, this is true. Because remember, the power set is just a set. Recall again that the empty set is always a subset of any set. Here is a result which tells us the cardinality of a power set of a given set S. This theorem states that the power set of a set S containing N elements will just have two raised to the N elements. So for example, if we go back to example 1, look at this one. S has zero elements. So 1 here is 2 raised to 0. My set S here has two elements. So 4 is 2 raised to 2, and my set S here has 3 elements, and 8 can be written as 2 cubed. Let us prove this result. I will divide my proof into two cases. The first one is when the set S is the null set, the empty set, and the second one is when S is non-empty. For the first case, suppose that S is the empty set, that is, my n here is equal to 0. Then, we know that the empty set is the only subset of itself. Hence, the power set of the empty set is just a set containing the empty set. And so, power set of the empty set, its cardinality is equal to 1, which is the same as 2 raised to 0. So, therefore, the result is true when n is equal to 0. Of course, for our second case, suppose that S is non-empty, write S as x1, x2 up to xn. So take note that this is really important, the fact that S is not equal to the empty set, so that we can write it in this way. We cannot write S in this way if S is the empty set. To get the cardinality of the power set of S, what we want to do is to get all possible subsets of S. We get B, an arbitrary subset of S. That is, B is an element of the power set of S. We want to know how many such Bs are there. Now, in order to determine how many such Bs are there, we just look at our elements and it's either we get x1, we do not use x2, we get x3, and so on. So that means for each xi, it's either xi is in B or xi is not in B. So hence, how many such possible Bs are there? You have two options for each one. So therefore, we have 2 raised to the n possible such 
subsets. Therefore, the cardinality of the power set of S is equal to 2 raised to the n. Just to make this counting argument clearer to you, let's just suppose that we have x1, x2, x3. I am listing all the subsets of S. I will use 0 when I mean that I will not put it in my subset and 1 if I will use it. What will be the possibilities here? So for x1, it's either I will use it or not. And then here for x2, if I do not use x1, I can either use x2 or not. Same here also, 1, 0. And lastly for x3, this is 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1. So that's where the 2 raised to 3 came in. If you look at this branch, 0, 1, 0, it means that what will be the first subset? That will just be x2. Next, you have 0, 1, 1. So that's x2, x3. Next, this one, 0, 0, 0. So that is just the null set. Then you have 0, 0, 1. So you're just using x3 and so on and so forth. I just show this just so that it will be clear to you why I have this argument over here. Let us consider this next example. We have the set A here. And what is the cardinality of our set A here? The cardinality of A is 2. So therefore, from our previous theorem, the power set of A has 2 raised to 2 or 4 elements. What will be the elements of the power set of A? I have this set and then inside I will put the subsets of A. So just like what we did earlier, we have the null set. This one, no elements. And then we have one element. So that will be the null set. So enclose that by a set. And which one? The set containing the null set. So these are the one element subsets. And then of course the two element subsets would be the set A itself. Here is a nice result about sets and power sets. Let A and B be sets. Then A is a subset of B if and only if the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. It's as if we can just put power sets on both sides of the subset relationship here. Let us prove this. This is a biconditional, so therefore we have to divide our proof into two cases. This direction, A subset of B implies this one in the other direction. If this is true, then this must be true. I will prove this direction. So that is, we want to show that A is a subset of B implies that the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. I am using the green part here just to give you a guide of what I am doing, but this is not a part of the proof. This will give us the structure of our proof. Since we are proving an implication, we start with our premise. Suppose that A is a subset of B. We want to show that the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. How do we show that one set is a subset of another set, we get an arbitrary element here and show that it is an element of the second set. So therefore, how do we start our proof? We let x be an arbitrary element of the power set of A. You want to end up with x is an element of the power set of B so that from here, we now get that power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. Okay, what does it mean for X to be in the power set of A? It only means that X is a subset of A. 
always remember this. Something is inside the power set if and only if it is a subset of this set. However, A is a subset of B. If A is a subset of B, what will happen then? X will now be a subset of B. That is true by the transitivity of subsets. We proved that in our previous video lecture. Since A is a subset of B, by transitivity of subsets, we now have that X is a subset of B. And this is exactly what it means for X to be an element of the power set of B. That concludes this part over here. Therefore, we have shown that the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. For our next direction, we want to show the converse. If the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B, then A must be a subset of B. So again, we start with our premise. Suppose that the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. In order to show that A is a subset of B, I will not use the direct way of you know, getting an arbitrary element of A here and then showing that A is an element of B. That technique will not work because we have to make use of our given. We have to make use of the power sets of A and B. What we will do is, let us recall that a set is a subset of itself, correct? What does it mean for A to be a subset of A? It only means that A is an element of its power set. So now I have a statement which involves the power set of A, but from our premise, the power set of A is a subset of the power set of B. So thus, we have that A is an element of the power set of B. If we look at again the definition, what does it mean for a set to be an element of a power set? It only means that this one is a subset of B. And we arrived at our goal.